Hi there, Mike here from Haven of Code, and in this series I'm going to be taking you through step-by-step -step tutorials on how to use this piece of software, Logic Pro. Now Logic is incredibly deep and has a lot of levels and is a lot of use to a lot of different people, but today I just want to do a real basic, real stark intro to get you on your way on your Logic journey, for lack of sounding cheesy. First of all, what I'd like to talk about is before you even install Logic, what you should do to make sure that your system is going to be optimised. Now this may seem obvious, but trust me it's going to have a big impact on how the software behaves with your system. So the first thing I will say to people is you want to make sure you have at least 4 gigs of RAM installed. I know you can install less and get away with running Logic, but for everything to run smoothly I think 4 is a good thing to go after. The second thing I want to talk about is if you've got Photoshop or Final Cut or something that's very CPU intensive uh, also running on your system, Logic is just not going to perform as well. It needs a lot of those same resources. Um, so you want to make sure that if you're working on a project in Logic, uh, you've got as much space for it to roam on your system as humanly possible and this this means just you know just obviously not cluttering up the system with loads of software being open that doesn't need to be or that is going to take a lot of power from your computer because ultimately it's just going to worsen your experience. The next thing I want to talk about is file management and that is where to save everything where everything goes on your system, how Logic behaves with folders and stuff like that. So if I open up this Finder window, you'll see that I have a few open. The first one I would like to look at is this one, and you'll see that I have my music folder highlighted here, uh, and um, there is Logic highlighted in yellow, and this is where, by default, Logic will live, and you can see as I clicked on Logic then, I have all my projects in folders and alphabetized. The next thing I want to mention is, again, may seem obvious, but it's important to keep, uh, you know, projects named like this because um, if you've got a big project on and you're saving stuff under loads of different names, you know, um, if you're if you're saying I, I I've put a delay on on this one and this one's got a freaky reverb in it and you're putting all that in the name it can just sometimes confuse things so it's, it's, it's best to be succinct and just keep you know uh, folders like this organized because it can really make a difference down the stretch uh, and at 2 a.m. when you're trying to find that loop or that song that you need to work on for the next day you'll thank me for telling you to keep your your logic folder organized. Now the next thing I want to go on to is the library and this lives sits on your Macintosh hard drive uh, by default. I just want to show you where all the stuff under the hood in Logic live. So I'm going to click library and in there we have a folder called application support and then I'm going to hit L and we'll scroll straight to Logic and in here is where we have everything that lives under the hood in terms of logic. So we have channel strip settings, if you don't know what a channel strip is I'm going to get to that in a second. We have things like chord grids, we have sample patch libraries in here, we have all your key commands, we have demo songs, we have plugins, we have templates, sampler instruments, um, tuning stuff, and then um, other settings for other instruments within Logic. Okay, so you'll see I've opened up Logic finally, and we're presented with this template chooser by default, first of all, uh, where we can create different types of projects quickly for different purposes, and for this example here today, I'm just gonna select M2 Projects. Then we're presented with a dialog box that says, hey, how many tracks do you wanna create? And uh, for this example, I'm just gonna create one, and then underneath that, we get the option to create a software instrument or an audio track or an external MIDI 
device which is something completely different. For this example, I'm just going to select software instrument so we can input our own sound. And I just want to talk a little bit about how Logic looks uh, and the look and feel of Logic, first of all. Uh, this is the arrange page along here. This is where all your audio and MIDI will live, and this will make up your session. If we go from the left kind of down here, so this is the arrange page, as I said, then we've got the track header here, which will stack up all your tracks on top of one another, and this is where all your tracks will live, and you can control them. Um, and then if we go left again, we've got the channel strip editor here. This is where we can insert different effects on our tracks. And then if we go over to this down here, we've got uh, transport controls. So that's play, pause, uh, record, you know, generic sort of things. And then we have, over here, what's called the media tab, over in this top right. And this is another incredibly important uh, part here. If we go to the top right and click media, we're presented with this, another group of tab tabs. Um, this first one says bin, and this is where all your audio for your session will live, whether it's um, copies of the same audio file or the actual original physical audio file that's sitting on your hard drive, and it's just a convenient place to stick audio files that you're wanting to use within your session. If we, go, if we click to the right here, uh, you've got loops, and this is... For anybody who's ever used GarageBand, this is quite similar. You've got different search terms here, so if you're looking for a particular loop, I just usually click all and then morph down from there. If we click to the right again, we have another tab called the library, and this is where all your sounds will live to load up to your software instruments and make different sounds, whether they be acoustic pianos, bass, drums, percussion, keyboards, synthesizers, you, you get the idea, they're all here. Uh, if we go to the right again, we have this thing called the browser, and uh, this is basically acts as a window to your hard drive and it's convenient for you not to have to come out of the logic environment. You can just skip around your hard drive and find relevant files to your session and drag them in. Pretty hassle free. This approach to presentation holds true down here in the bottom left as well. So you've got one window and uh, all these tabs come off of it. If we go down here um, to the bottom left and work our way right again, we've got this thing here called the mixer tab and this will give you a representation of all of your channel strips side by side so you can, you know, when you have a, a full session you can get your mix on and, uh, and really get into the detail there. Um, then if we go to the right again we have this thing called the sample editor now this is specifically tailored for an audio the audio side of things and uh if i had a sample in here i could really get down to the nitty gritty and uh really work out the kinks in my sample if we go over here we have a piano roll and this is where we can edit midi information and transpose and do a lot of stuff to the info that we put into Logic uh, and I'll be demonstrating something similar to that in a second. If we go over again we have um, a score window for people that prefer working with scores. If we go over here again we have um, another editor called the Hyper Editor which I don't really want to get into today but I'm sure we will do at a later date. So that was a lot of information to take in. It's kind of all I want to cover for today just because of the sheer amount of information. Um, so feel free to leave a comment and we'll get to you as many as we can and uh, we'll see if we can help you out. Um, sorry it's all been quite trivial today and quite obvious in places but I really just wanted to give a, a sort of solid understanding for the first lesson and then hopefully we'll get to some more practical use 
lessons as we move on. If you haven't done so already though, please uh, subscribe and if you've been an extra cool, then please hit that like button, that will help us out a lot. Um, Till next time, this has been Mike from Haven of Code. Thanks a lot. Hi guys, Mike here for the Heaven of Code. You are uh, wrong already.